For four generations, ever since the end of the Great Depression when my great-grandmother, Clarissa Morgan Guyon, began the tradition, the Guyon family has gathered together to make candy, to be given out during the Christmas holidays. We now gather at Bowling Green, Ohio during the week of Thanksgiving each year and work to make 170 to 180 pounds of hand-dipped chocolates. The process begins like this. <laughs> well, I can throw it down next if you would like me to. We can have a chocolate throw down. Ten pound slabs of Peter's chocolate, dark milk and white, are broken into smaller pieces so that they can be melted for the dippers. Look at all that chocolate. There won't be any sound on this part of the footage. As that is going on, the fillings for the candies, creams, fudges, caramels, nougat, and toffee, are all prepared. Butter and sugar. Right and caro. And caro. It's just butter and sugar and caro right and a little here. bit of water. But soon it will be toffee. And deliciousness. Yes. Caramel and nougat fillings are poured into a pan and left to cool before they are cut. Yeah. In these pans is concentrated evil. If okay. only there were someone here to deliver. I know the whole triangles. Whatever to the to the, to the, to the <laughs> wanting dippers. If there were only someone. If only there were someone. Nougat. Oh. <laughs> Look, it's nougat boy. Hello, Would citizens. you please get to work? Thank and you, us. nougat boy. Oh, better give her a few. While toffee is poured onto a cookie sheet and scored. Fudges and creams, however, require a bit more work. Yellow. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. Mixing blue and yellow, <laughs> and it's going to be there. green when it's done. <laughs> An important element to the candy making process is a substance known as supervert. It's yep. supervert. Yep. There it is. There's the hypodermic needle right there. Contrary to popular rumor, we don't use hypodermic needles to insert liquid filling into chocolate shells. Instead, we add supervert, a softening agent, to the filling and then work up the filling until it becomes solid enough to roll into balls. Over time, the supervert kicks in and the filling reverts to its liquid form. If the supervert is forgotten, this resoftening process does not happen. Once the candy is rolled, cut, or scored, we come to, arguably, the most important step in the process, the dipping. This is also the process when the most things tend to go wrong. When I dip, I have excess chocolate that builds up on my hands. In this area right here, as you can see it happening right now. <laughs> when I go to set the chocolate down on the tray, oftentimes, that excess chocolate wants to glop. Glops are not pretty. And so, I sweep it off. <laughs> Leave me alone. This is not because of any deficiency in our dippers, but simply because of the nature of the process. Glops of chocolate, leeks, and oddly shaped candies are not uncommon. This is what it's supposed to look like. And here's what uh, these look like. They still taste perfectly fine, but the chocolate didn't set up properly, and so yes. they got streaked mm -hmm. with a little bit of white. And so they are going in the bone pile because they don't look very good. Put these in what we call the bone pile, which is available for our consumption because we don't care what they look like. In fact, I'm going to have this banana fudge right here. In order to avoid these streaks, temperatures in the candy making room must be kept reasonably cool with the use of our sophisticated temperature control system, otherwise known as the windows. Each flavor of candy has a unique symbol, many of which are written in chocolate during the dipping process. A P for peppermint, an O for orange, a single line for a buttercream, an X for chocolate fudge, and so on. Some candies, such as raspberry and peppermint fudge, are drizzled with different colors. And some candies have things placed on top of them. A peanut for peanut butter, yellow sprinkles for banana fudge, and of course for eggnog fudge, nutmeg. So Jeffrey. Yes? What's that on the marble slab there? I know. <laughs> that is eggnog fudge, or at least it's going to be. Eggnog ah. fudge, huh? 
Yes. What, what does the presence of eggnog fudge in our midst mean? It means the nutmeg fairy's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I have arrived! <laughs> Hey, um, <laughs> you missed a bunch of. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> As the night wears on, the nutmeg fairy starts to lose her cheerful demeanor and starts to go a little bit insane. <laughs> you dropped your nutmeg. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> and the now I must sway for another year. Like, and the nut Margaret fairy goes away for another year. But when well. you need. Call my name and I shall appear. We'll call you tomorrow. Yes. Margaret! Yeah. <laughs> Shit, out of yeah. my way, keep away from my outfit! <laughs> Once the chocolate has set up, it is time to cup and box the candies. It's really quite Hi. pathetic. Jeffrey and I are doing arguably the most enjoyable task of the entire candy making process. Oh, definitely. <laughs> the candies are placed into individual paper cups and stored in five pound stock boxes, where they will remain until. Boxing Day. Contrary to popular belief, for the Guyans, Boxing Day is not an obscure British holiday the day after Christmas, but rather an extremely tedious afternoon and evening two days after Thanksgiving. Now that the candy has been made, it must be distributed into pound and half pound boxes to be given away. That's the before picture. That's the before picture. The actual picture actual looks actually very similar, just with saran wrap sticking out of all of them. <laughs> While we have managed to expedite this process as much as is possible over the years, it's still among the most tedious jobs of the week. <laughs> We've been doing this for about 15 minutes now, we're already starting to unspool. <laughs> Well, that covers the half pounds. The good news, however, is that once we have boxed the candy, we're done. The gift boxes are filled, and the excess chocolate is now used on other items. Peanut clusters, chocolate-covered cherries, and a substance known as bark. Rice Krispies, pretzels, or crushed candy canes, dipped in chocolate. And now the exhausted family packs up the candy and cleans up the kitchen, and another year's Thanksgiving work is done. And so, from all of us in the Guy and Family Candy Kitchen, have a happy holiday season. We're done! Yay! <laughs> That's becoming my thing. I